professionals. Young professionals. Mm -hmm. Now, how uh, how does that how how do you reach out and recruit? Well, we, we can either do that uh, by our websites. Mm -hmm. uh, we do that by our board members who actually ask individuals in their companies to be a part of this program. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and we also do uh, a lot of the communication today is done by Facebook. Techies, that's techies. right. So you guys have <laughs> Facebook, everything, right? We, we have a young man uh, who has joined our organization, uh, Joshua Oaks, who is our marketing and uh, program coordinator, and is just absolutely um totally insane. Right, so he's tweeting every day. Tweeting, oh, Facebook, everything. all the other things that I can't think <laughs> of. Uh, mm -hmm. He's helped bringing uh, OCCJ into the 21st century. Wow. So that's been a, a very unique add for us to OCCJ for us to have that capability. Have that. that is great. Now the Interfaith uh, uh -huh. Trilog, and as you said earlier that OCCJ is a human relations, not a religious. Do right. people sometimes Get, those, get that mixed up or confused. That's, that's true. That happens on a regular basis. Uh, that they automatically think that we are part of some religious organization. We use that kind of in reverse in the sense that uh, the organizations who are willing to team with us to open their houses of worship so we can have those type of trialogues, depending on what the topic matter is, to allow us to come in and allow the public to come in and actually learn from those particular houses of faith. So we, we partnership, we leverage our relationships with these houses of faith. The Boston Avenue is, is a great partner of ours and uh, the Islamic Society Peace Academy, um, the Temple Israel and, and Congregation uh, Beth, uh, B'nai Amuna yes. has been, have been real good partners with us. And we continue to reach out and seek others too uh, that we can actually have like our youth tour our youth tour takes individuals, young people, into different houses of worship so they can in fact learn about that particular house of worship and maybe dispel some of the myths mm. that they may hear, you know, as they go to school or, right. or they may hear in, their, in other churches that this is just not true. I've gone to this particular house mm -hmm. of worship. Uh, we've had leaders in that church explain yes. what our faith is about mm -hmm. and how we worship. Mm -hmm. So that gives them an opportunity to see firsthand so they can learn on their own. Ah. Now, what, um, as far as the interfaith, what are some of the topics that you all have dealt with and covered in the past? Sure, uh, well this, this past uh, year, we just finished up, matter of fact, Sunday, uh, it was living and dying in America. Mm -hmm. The cost of living, you know, and then when someone needs to go into, as an example, in the hospice, we had a section on that also. Also, when it comes to the point where we're dying in the hereafter, we've had mm. subject matter experts speak on those subjects. So we usually take very cutting edge uh, mm. topics that sometimes people may not want to talk about. Yes. And we actually get the experts in, uh, line those individuals up so they can talk about the, the uh, the particular topic that we have at hand. Right, and we're going to be showing some footage of those uh, different interfaith uh, trilog series that you've done. Uh, have they been very successful in what they, we see? They have. We were, in, in, and I use this particular event, this past one, we were a little bit concerned because it was right after the snow, oh. uh, the, the blizzard. The snowmageddon. The, the snowmageddon. Yes. Uh, the blizzaster, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. uh, we were really concerned that we would not get the turnout that we, we had hoped for. Uh, we usually average anywhere between 150, 200, 250 people. We ended up having over 150 people right after that snow. So we thought that was really, really good as far as attendance is concerned. Oh, that is, that's great. And it continued to grow as far as attendance uh, uh, as we progressed through the, the rest of the program. Wow. What about the partnerships? I, I was reading about the partnerships with the community organizations. Mm -hmm. What are some of the... Uh, well, some of the basic principles behind that is mm -hmm. to make sure that we partner with people who are like-minded, who have the same basic vision, uh, as an example. And uh, with that, we try to make sure that, uh, you know, those are issues that are not political or religious, but in fact, issues that do face us in the community. Mm -hmm. As an example, the, the uh, immigration, yeah. you know, we want to make sure that the immigration laws are in place, but they're fair, that they don't arbitrarily pick people out uh, on an arbitrary basis to say, hey, you're, you're, not, uh, you're not a citizen uh, and, and you should go home. So those types of, uh, this is Islamophobia, mm -hmm. you know, those things I mentioned earlier. We want to make sure we partner with uh, good partners who are like-minded in the sense that, you know, there's just no bias 
just because someone may be of a different faith yes. or belief or religion that you can automatically target those individuals. Mm. Now, now tell me about, you know, when you talk about the, the partnerships, do they usually come to you all and say, hey, we want to partner with you all and would you on events? Are there event partnerships that you do? Absolutely. Uh, of all of all types, the one that comes to mind imme immediately is uh, Tulsa Global Alliance and Kids World. Wow. Uh, we've partnered with them and their uh, annual activity, which has turned out to be huge. It is that's if you if you have children and you want to get involved in yeah. uh, something that's really really productive as far as uh, uh, trying to get kids to understand that you know there's a bigger world out there right. and to become world citizens, you know you can take a part of this right here. Wow. In Tulsa. That's that's a great event too. Yes, it is. And then uh, you're part of the Martin Luther King. Absolutely, Martin Luther King. Uh, we we said we have membership on the board. Uh, we participate in the parade every right. year, which Tell was great. Tell us about great. the parade. What? Parade was great this year. We're, we're really lucky that we got the weather number one. Right. Uh, the route was changed a little bit, uh, but we did feel like it was a great success. Uh, we had a, a great, pe a great number of people turn out for it. And who were they? Like Camp Any? <clears throat> well, we everyone. had Camp Any Towners. We had some of those members that had been through Camp Any Town, marching the parade. We had board members, and of course, the staff was involved yes. with it too. So we were really excited that about was, it, and yeah. it turned out to be a really, really great event. Mm -hmm. uh, the commemoration uh, ceremony too at Boston Avenue was excellent. Uh, we felt very good about being a partner with that too. So, right. yeah, MLK is uh, at the top you, of the you list. You reach out. Just because of what, you know, he stood for, obviously, mm -hmm. and, and that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Now, I also looked, looking at uh, the uh, website, you have uh, the calendar and holiday of events. Right. Now, now why do you have the calendar and holi holiday events of the various uh, religions and Absolutely. And you know, it's, a, it's, it's important that, uh, you know, we just don't focus on one particular group as far as religious holidays are concerned. It's important. We think it's important for people to know that uh, there's all types of religious holidays mm -hmm. out there. So we want to be able to provide that, that map, if you will, or that calendar right. for individuals to know what particular dates or what is happening on that particular date okay. if it's not in your particular belief or faith. Mm -hmm. okay. So we give our individuals that opportunity to have that information and we feel good about it. We have a lot of people who ask us for that so they can start marking their calendars I as know. they start looking that, forward that into the day. Beautiful, it's a beautiful calendar, Thank I you. might add. And you put that together every year. Every year, yes we do. Wow, that is great. Now tell me, as far as getting involved, you said that you need <clears throat> volunteers? Always. Uh, in what capacity? Well, uh, in, in, in every one of our segments, uh, again, I go back to different and the same. We can always use adults. A lot of times we have retired teachers or administrators okay. who actually go in and teach that hour class to those youngsters, uh, to second and third graders. The different and the same. Different and because the same. Because Nancy McDonald Nan heads that up. And Nancy and McDonald she's... has been so instrumental in that different and the same program. Mm -hmm. Uh, since Joshua's come on, she's, she's trained him and got him uh, coordinated with that. And she's had an opportunity to kind of step back a little bit, yes. which she so richly deserves. Right. Because right. she was, she would be on vacation, as an example, and she would still be doing work for Different and the Same. Oh. That's just how committed she is because she believed yes. in the program itself and what mm -hmm. it represented. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can always use adults in that capacity. Uh, we can use adults on any of our steering committees that we have, and they are for you know Jewish, Christian, Muslim uh, study group. Okay. Uh, we have a uh, we just got through a trilogue series. Uh, we're always looking for members and volunteers for us to help those committees pick. Uh, uh, develop those programs. Okay. So for and delivery. so they actually come up with the topics of what you're going to cover. Absolutely. That so it's not OCCJ that comes up with the topics. Mm -hmm. It is those those members who are part of uh, mm -hmm. part of the uh, committee. Wow, that is great. We have teen trial law coming up okay. uh, right. starting, I believe, March 23rd. Uh, you can always go to the websites to make sure that you can find the dates of any of our events. But that's another piece that we have individuals who come in who work on that committee mm -hmm. and make sure that uh, uh, they have the programming uh, developed. Wow, and you are a nonprofit organization. Absolutely. A, a lot of people ask about that. We are a nonprofit. Uh, <clears throat> we have, excuse me, we have great support from. Now, not only the public sector, but the private sector too, and individuals for that matter, uh, who do, again, uh, we believe and they believe in our mission and vision. So uh, 
they support us in that effort. We do have our annual dinner uh, yes, once a year. That right. is our major piece of uh, fundraising for operational uh, for the operational expectations for the for the uh, uh, center. Right. So, what are the challenges as a human relations organization that you face from a community? I know there are challenges. Absolutely. I think uh, obviously in today's environment is staying solvent. Uh, you know, as far as a nonprofit is concerned, uh, one of the ways that we're we're working on that too is is uh, we have a new program we've initiated and had some success with is uh, raising funds. Uh, is the uh, fee for service, mm -hmm. and that is a diversity and training service that That's we provide right. for companies, uh, mm -hmm. whether they're public or private, uh, that we can come in and customize diversity uh, training and inclusion training. But further to your question, uh, those challenges are some of the things that we see today that continue to happen as far as hate is, is concerned mm -hmm. in communities, uh, the miscommunication of, miscommunication. of, uh, of biases that mm -hmm. uh, we hopefully can help uh, groups, our individuals, our, our entities uh, come to grips with. Those are always the challenges and it seems like we see more and more of that, that hate and the organization yeah. of hate and the misunderstanding of hate and bigotry and bias and that is always our biggest uh, uh, effort to try to make sure that we combat. So what do you say to those who say there's no need for human relations organizations anymore? Well I, I obviously tend to disagree I think that's probably uh, one of the biggest fallacies that anyone could actually believe that uh, the things that are going around, mm -hmm. going on around them, uh, don't need to be addressed. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, there is a need for individuals to understand that you know if you if you and I are sitting here together, mm -hmm. and we find out that we have more in common than we have differences, I think we have a better opportunity to get along a lot better. Mm -hmm. Just you said that simple. it, right? You said it, and and I agree with you, Jeff. Thank you for being my guest. Well, thank you. We appreciate the opportunity. Uh, we appreciate what TCC does, and, and we want to thank you also for the for the opportunity to be here. Well, thank you because you hold the lifeblood. Okay, we remember try. that when we I saw try. that. And I'd like to end with a quote by. Um, Rabbi Mark Boone Fitzerman yes. about OCCJ on the testimonial page, and he said. I quote, I believe in OCCJ because it faces the hard questions, anger, tolerance, mistrust with energy and passion. That's OCCJ in a nutshell. That is us. Sounds good. Thank you. And thank you all for joining me for Tulsa Community College Diversity Dialogue. I'm Rebecca Marks. And until next time, take care.